kids, Brandon Wolf here, about to give you some helpful hints on making a brand new table. Now, if you'll follow me to come right over here, we have our structure half. We have our structure half made here, as you can see with our fine oak outlay and a good, genuine steel shaft force embracers on a half back, 45 degree angle screw drive. You can easily fit any assortment of wood screws or, if you will, washers. Now, we have ran into a bit of a snag here. As you'll see here, we tried using a rabbit butt joint to scroll all the way down the wood. Now, with Peruvian red forest hardwood, it's really, really important you don't make incisions next to each other. This will just compromise the entire piece of wood. So, we miscalculated in our misfortunes. <laughs> But this is an America if you can't fix it. Now, we have our half back sprocket again here at the 45 degree angle with the washer. As you can clearly see, not fitting, not working. We have tried a many different uh, ways to fix this. Uh, oh, oh, hit me in the head. Oh, oh, how many times have you done this at home? Plenty, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. But this will not work. What we need to do is think with our head. If you follow me out to my uh, metal forgery, I will show you how we are going to take this simple little half angle back scrocket screw 45 degree washer to be able to make a fit into this uh, Peruvian red forest, hard forest, wood forest, wood. Follow me. What type of wood was that? All right. So here we have our, uh, our steel forge. Now you want to remember children, safety first when working with an open flame, or Canadians. And we'll walk right over here with our handy dandy tongs. These may look like simple grill tongs, but these right here, these are Kevlar reinforced 80 proof tips, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right, now we'll easily take this to uh, come find what we need here. And once again, kids, safety first. You don't want to be doing this unsupervised. If your parents are around, maybe do it while they're in the room next to you, okay? All right, now we'll easily begin here. What we want to do is we want to manipulate the metal. We want to soften it from its core. Then we can easily strike and force it into place that we need to do. Which reminds me, I need my hammer of Thor. Never come unprepared, as I am always told. Ah, so we put my simple hammer, easily found at Home Depot uh, for 97 cents on the dollar. Sale ends on Saturday. Today's Saturday. Get to your local Home Depot. All right. So, as we will start, we're gonna we're gonna start with slow striking matches. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. I'm sorry. I just this is a quick commercial break, just to remind you, Home Depot plugged it earlier. You gotta go, then <laughs> you gotta go. Now we're back to redneck welding <laughs> with Boob Bob Billy Beep. Yes, uh, as I stated earlier, my name was Brandon Wolf. Now my name is <laughs> Boob Bob Billy Beep. All right. So. Like I said, we want to make these slow striking motions down the center of the, of the weld here. And if you can, Jared, you want to zoom in on this here, we'll, we'll get it nice and good. Now, a, a good American Bic lighter will do, but if you have fashioned yourself some sort of, of kiln or, or, or lathe with fire, that um, could also be useful. All right. I'm sorry, folks. My head's not in it today. I'm just thinking about a funny joke I heard uh, earlier in the week. All right, here we go. As we will slowly work our way down, right down the middle. Now, this is going... Is this dangerous? It's been questioned in, in society itself from an early, early uh, uh, 1994 perspective. If redneck welding really is the best way to weld, um, I would uh, assume that, yes, people... This is what I'm going to tell you. Where I learned everything from, TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday. A little show called Home Improvement. That uh, guy, Tim Taylor, he never got it wrong. Classic. 
back. All right, but what he would show us to do here is just, you know, go right down the middle. You want to heat that metal up, heat it up, heat it up, and then get it in a quick striking motion. All right, and pick that metal back up again, and heat it back up again. Wow. Get a quick striking motion again. This will happen. This is dangerous. The danger of the job, people. It's, it's a hazard we all have to go through. All right. Now, this may not be the correct Bob Vila way to do it, but it gets the job done. It's done. Now, now the uh, metal is becoming hot to the touch. You can't even touch it. I'm glad that I have 80-proof Kevlar tips on this. Um, but now the, the metal is very fragile and very weakened and, and cracked in the middle, if you will. And fuck... <laughs> Billy Bob! <laughs> and uh, what you'll want to do to make sure it's not weakened anymore is quickly cool it in uh, your cooling agent. That ah. sounds hot. <laughs> Wow. There we go. All right. <laughs> now, if you follow me, kids, back into our workshop. Just uh, dry off our metal work here. Yep. yep. Oh. What is that? What is all this? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, back to me, turn. Turn, please. Back to me. Back to me. All right. As we are now finished with our uh, our our kiln action, it is safe to take off. Our glasses. Now you want to make sure you fold these in a nice, neat little package and put them right where they can be easily accessible again. All right. And if you'll follow me here, now, now that we have formed this metal, uh, metal object into its proper shape to easily fit the Peruvian red forest pine, um, it should fit like a glove. Of course, uh, uh, that just would have been you know. Amazing. Some, yeah. Sometimes there are some complications. Um, and there you have it, children. Go. <laughs> this is step one to making a Peruvian hardwood forest pine needle table. Now, what you can do is, with this is uh, once we get the legs on and everything, you can fashion yourself a drink or maybe uh, put on a lamp or... If you have some reading material, perhaps uh, some Sports Illustrated or mm. Nancy Drew mm -hmm. or anything of the sort, right on this table is a good source to hold it. Not only that, uh, I might suggest putting your keys on the table when you come home. I, 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 uh, I, I, again, I personally love lamps. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, that's why I have you here, Jared. That's all for today. Uh, stay tuned for the next time when I show you how to coat a nice small thin lacquer on the table using a simple compound of Windex. That's for next week, children. Take care. This this episode of Redneck Welding has been brought to you by Travelocity. <laughs> Hello. Always remember to get your tickets and whatever I sell off my website. Take care. Have fun with Brandon the Welder.